few years later, a new era was born. In the early 1950s, a group of 26 African-American artists known as the Florida Highwaymen got on the road. Highwaymen artist Al Black considers his paintings alive and complete when you see the Florida landscapes in a frame. Why this frame? For, for the sunset. Okay. That's the right color. But depictions of this beauty start off all from memory. And you can see it. I can see it. Even the colors, the... Colors, the... The... Trees. The margin lines, the... Down to the detail. And that's how you know it's a God-given gift. You yes, see a God-given gift. How is it when you step back and look at it? A gift God used to change his life. He really saw the power of it during a drug addiction in his younger years, which led him to prison. I went from prison to prison of pain. You know, like if I go over to one prison, God, the warden, and I always see the ones I had did in that, and they asked me, would I come? I said, you have to ask my warden. You got to know what you're putting on the hill. The vivid memories of these landscapes translated into artwork on state prison walls. I think the most impressive part is mm -hmm. you take what's in the sky and reflect it on the water. Because mm -hmm. that, that's tough to do. Painting supplies were donated to him while he was in custody so he could make the murals. I've been uh, clean for 28 years. Does so, painting help you? Uh, painting help you? Stay yeah. Clean? And the prison helped me. It did. It was the best thing ever happened to me. I was in there for 12 years. It, it turned my whole life back around. It was a recovery after a fall from grace of sorts. The famous artist lived well before his addiction. He was brave and a master at selling art in Fort Pierce in the 1960s during segregation. Some of them would run me out, but I would say, oh, I'm not real black, so I'm sunburnt. You know, yeah. that would pick things up and I could go back again and sell some. And so I left the doors open. He would sell the art with about a dozen of his fellow black artists learning how to paint along the way. The group later became known as the Highway Men because they sold pieces roadside. A couple of guys didn't want to be called the Highway Men, but I felt like we were the highway man because we stayed on the highway man and that highway man named them bought Al Black a long way. He is still selling the paintings that have gone from being worth a few dollars to thousands. What's the most you sold one for? Mm, I don't sold a painting for 25, 30,000. Now after having nothing as a tribute to the historic painters originating in Fort Pierce, they're getting a museum this year in the city. A long time coming for the group that gave art a new face. I feel like I'm going to go and lay down one day. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to leave some back where uh, somebody else will say, well, Al taught me this here, here. Now, at the age of 76, as he steadies his hand to paint, he's passing along those skills to another generation. I'm a descendant of uh, Mr. Alfred Hare. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. You got to remember, there's only a few highwaymen left. You drop that shout. Mm -hmm. And I think the descendants have to continue to carry this legacy. On. Johnny Bennett's uncle was one of the most famous highwaymen, Alfred Hare. Bennett is now picking up the skill, hoping to pass it on to his son. Take your brush and clean it out. Learning from a man who knows best. We're starting to really get into yeah. the lessons, so hopefully I'll be able to pick it up and just carry it on from there. A legacy living on in more ways than one. And it will live on. A museum is slated to open this year along Avenue D in Fort Pierce.